Okay, let's talk about advanced strings. So everything I'm going to show you is not going to be used in this course, but I still think it's important to know. And there's some important syntax in here to know as well, and just different ways to handle the information that is in front of you. So let's go ahead and just print out a string or let's make a string first. Let's do a string of my name. And we'll just say my name is Heath. And similar to before, if we printed out our name, we could say print my name. And then if I wanted to print the first initial of my name or first letter in my name, I would just do something like this, right? So this should be familiar. And if we wanted to print out the last letter, we could just say negative one. This should be familiar to you from the list lesson. So we go ahead and we print this. We just say Python three and we do our new script again. You can see that we have big H and a little H because my name ends in both starts and ends in both. So we could also do something like take a sentence and we could say sentence. This is a sentence. And if we wanted to print out the first word of the sentence, we would have to know the amount of letters in it. So we know here that there is one, two, three, four. So this would be zero through three. So let's say if we wanted to print out sentence here and we knew zero through three. So remember, we don't have to put zero. We could just put something like this. And then if we did through three, it would only cut off at the eye. Remember, we have to go one further from our list lesson and we'll be able to print out the word this. We could do the same with sentence. We could go uh, forward a bunch if we want to, or we could do a negative nine because this is nine characters long through something like a negative nine through negative one would pull out that whole sentence uh, or the word sentence, I should say. So we can manipulate data this way. We can also split data. So we could say something like print and do sentence dot split. And this will split based on a delimiter. Now the delimiter here is by default a space and we cover delimiters in bash scripting. And we're just going to say, hey, every time there's a space, I want you to split out the sentence. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I made a mistake in my script. I didn't spell sentence correctly, which caused an error in the initial script. So let's try that again. So you see here it says this. That's what we we're expecting from this one. And here we have this is a sentence. It now breaks these out into individual words based on a delimiter. So let's go a little bit further. We can join a sentence as well. So let's have a scenario here. Let's say we want to split a sentence out. We'll say sentence split is equal to sentence dot split. And now we just split out the sentence, right? And we're putting in this variable of sentence underscore split. Now we could also join a sentence. So let's make a new variable and we'll call it sentence join. And here we can just say based on a delimiter, I want you to put a space in between everything here. So every every time you see a word in this sentence split, so let's go ahead and join. Anytime you see sentence split here and there's a new word in it, I want you to go ahead and join those with a space. And then we can go ahead and print out sentence join and let's see what happens here. This is a sentence. So I brought it all back for us. So not only can we take away and delimit a sentence by splitting, we can also join a sentence and add our own delimiter in there as well. So one of the most important things that we need to talk about is what happens if we have a quote and we say something like he said, give me all your money. Well, we need to add quotations in here, but if we do quotations like this, well, that's just making things really weird, right? Look at the color of the script. You can already tell it's going weird. That's going to throw an error, but we can use single quotes and double quotes and it'll work. 
We could also use single quotes here, double quotes inside, double quotes on the outside, single quotes on the inside. And that's a way to have quotes inside of a string. So let's go ahead and print that out. But let's say that you were insistent and you wanted to have double quotes and then double quotes here. Well, we could do a little bit of character escaping. So we could utilize this backslash here and say, hey, we're going to keep this string a string and then I'm going to end it right here. So this will tell me that from here to here, ignore these characters, right? So we're going to treat it as a string. Don't treat it as a quotation and end of string. So let's run it again. And you can see that quote, once we print it, we can say print quote. And we'll actually run it here. He said, give me all your money. And I realized that I tried to print earlier and probably did not print this quote because I never had the print in there. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, but we could do it either way. Again, we can put the single quotation in here. And you'll see the single quote works, but if we were to put in a double quotation, it would break it. So I'm going to control Z a couple times, and this is what the syntax should look like. This is very, very important. If there's one thing you're going to take away from advanced strings, please, please take this away from it because you need to know how to do some character escaping and that you will encounter that again in your career. So a couple more things. Let's say that we want to have a string here. Let's just say we'll call the string too much space. And we have something like, hello. And we just, you know, copy data, put it into this and somehow too much space in here. Uh, we can strip out the space. So we can just print too much space here. And we can do the same thing as we did before and do something like strip like this. Save it and look what happens. Now it's just going to print hello. There's no space around it. We're good to go. So that's a nice little feature. Another feature that we should know is let's say we had something like print a in Apple. What's this going to return? True. What it's looking for is, does A exist in Apple? Well, what if we did a lowercase here? Try it again, and you're going to see that it's false. So it's very case sensitive. Well, what about we wanted to say, hey, is there an A in the word Apple? And we don't know if it's capitalized, not capitalized. Well, we might say something instead like, hey, we're looking for a letter of A, and we're looking for the word of Apple, right? But what about we say print letter dot lower and then we say in word dot lower like this. Now this becomes improved because we're looking for a specific letter inside of a specific word. And when we lowercase everything, we lowercase this letter, lowercase all these letters then we're looking for a specific letter in a word. We don't have to worry about case sensitivity. And you will see this logic come into play when you're thinking about looking for specific items or specific key phrases or matching anything specific. You might want to consider putting everything in a lowercase and then trying to find it that way unless you are critical on case sensitivity. So this will probably come up again uh, in your career as you look at code. So if we run that again, now you can see that it returns back true. So one more thing I'm going to show you, and there's a lot of things that we can do with advanced strings. I don't want to beat too much into it because I really feel that um, this can get into overkill because there's so many things and tips and tricks that I can show you. But I really feel like some of this can be out of scope for the course. But I do think that as long as you're taking good notes and it's valuable now, you're going to have that as something to remember and look back upon as you do more Python development. So one more thing is a format. So let's say that your favorite movie is The Hangover. And we'll just keep that as a string. And let's just say something like print my favorite movie. Now, we have done in the past is 
and we could just say something like this plus you know string if it's not a string or we just say movie right and then we'd have to add a period in here something along those lines we can improve upon this we could say my favorite movie is and then we can just add a little placeholder here and then put a period now what we do after this is we just say dot format and then we say movie and now it knows to put in the movie that we have here or the variable that we have stored in movie. It knows to put it into these brackets here. We save this and watch what happens. My favorite movie is The Hangover. So you don't have to do a bunch of spacing and if things get weird, you know, with with your your string or, you know, how to write out your sentence, it's very easy to just have these placeholders. And then if things change, you know, it just updates easily. So this is a very nice way to hold things in a placeholder without making these weird formatting changes. So I, I like this method as opposed to the concatenation method that I showed you in our first video on strings. So if you're going to take away some things today, just take away that, you know, we have different ways of doing things. We've shown you with the list before of the zero and the negative one. I told you it was going to come up again. Just know that, again, zero is the first item or first letter or first whatever when we're talking about Python and we're talking about our variables, lists, strings. Always start with a zero. There's different ways to do the same thing and apply them across other items, right? So I've shown you this with lists. I've shown you this with strings. So get those wheels spinning and think about how you can utilize some things. Now, sentence has all different kinds of methods that we can use with it. And again, we're just touching back on methods and making it a little bit more advanced. But we, you see that we can split a sentence, we can join a sentence, uh, we can strip a sentence, or we can strip a string. Uh, so understanding that there are a lot of cool methods, uh, the lower method, we could do an upper method. We've talked about those as well. Knowing the different types of methods per, say, like a string or per class or however you want to combine it together is important as well. So always do your research when you are looking into, you know, how can I improve it? So if you're saying like, hey, is there a way to make something uppercase? Just go to Google and say, hey, how do I make a string all uppercase? And of course, it's dot upper. But if you didn't know that, then, you know, the Google machine would know that for you. And a lot of your code is going to be found on Stack Exchange or on Google, etc. So just be aware that these things exist and be aware that there are better ways to format your strings and there are uh, important syntax when it comes to escaping your quotations as well. So that's it for this lesson. We're going to have a couple more little lessons here and then we're going to move into script building and then we'll be starting our hacking journey. So I'll catch you over in the next video.